Just a few months ago, I was in a cab with a group of my Word on Fire colleagues. We were heading to um, the airport, and the cab driver was uh, an African-American woman. And she asked who we all were, and I said, well, we're a group that works for the Catholic Church. And that prompted a uh, anti-Catholic diatribe that lasted pretty much the whole trip to the airport. And she complained about a lot of the usual things, from birth control to women's ordination to the sex abuse crisis, the Pope, and everything. But her strongest, most passionate language was reserved for the Church's teaching on abortion. And remember she said, using the you know, standard phrase, uh, don't you realize that women have a right to choose what to do with their own bodies? Now, I'll confess, maybe out of fatigue or cowardice or some combination of the two, I didn't uh, engage her in much debate in the cab. But she came back to my mind rather vividly last week because we heard some really chilling statistics out of New York City. Namely that 41% of the pregnancies in New York City end in abortion. Staggering, 41%. But among African-American uh, women, 60% of the pregnancies end in abortion. And what struck me was, here was a lady, African-American lady, who was complaining bitterly about the Catholic Church, which is vehemently opposed to abortion, while a genocide of her own people is proceeding apace with the full sanction of American law. There's something funny here. There's something off kilter. And you find it, I think, a lot in what I call the anti-anti-abortion uh, crowd. There's a lot of um, um, confusion on the score. A lot of ideology sets in. I'll look at just a, a couple of things. I think there's a, there's a great deal of, of confusion. I'll look just at three issues. The first one is this. We've heard for a long time that with requisite sex education in the schools, and especially with the availability of contraceptives, the number of abortions will go down dramatically. The catchphrase you'll hear a lot uh, from politicians is we want to make abortion safe, legal, and rare. Well, look at New York City, where sex education happens at all uh, levels of, of the educational system, and more to it, where contraceptives are as available as lollipops. Um, Archbishop Dolan of New York, just uh, in the wake of these statistics, remarked that in large glass bowls, usually reserved for candy, you can now find condoms. So there's no uh, shortage of availability of contraceptives in New York, and yet, rare? Abortions are anything but rare in New York City. That reminded me, too, of the situation in Africa. You hear the same argument, that we just make contraceptives more available, uh, AIDS will go down dramatically. Well, South Africa, um, the latex contraceptive is as available as it is in New York, and the AIDS um, epidemic is getting worse and worse. Whereas in Uganda, for example, where a very strong abstinence program is being implemented by the government, the AIDS statistics are dramatically down. So I think that's the first um, confusion on this score. Here's the second thing that struck me. Uh, for a long time, we've heard that pro-life people are insensitive to the terrible struggle involved in this decision uh, to abort. That they don't understand how uh, women find themselves often in the vice of terrible uh, circumstances and only with great anguish make this uh, choice. Now, I don't doubt for a minute there are women who do indeed find themselves in this situation, who do indeed face tremendous anguish as they make the decision. But let's be honest about this. If 41% of pregnancies are ending in New York City, in the capital of the world, that means a lot of people are treating abortion as a type of birth control or a type of family planning. And this means there's a terrible coarsening of our moral sensibility, it seems to me, that our sense of the dignity of life has been severely compromised. And here's another connection I would make. The ancient Greeks taught us long ago that law not only orders society in a practical way, it also trains a society morally. So what's legal it comes to be seen as, well, good, it's legitimate. What's illegal, well, I should avoid that. That must be a bad thing. The fact that since 1973 in the Roe v. Wade decision, that we basically said abortion on demand is fine, it's legally protected. The fact that 50 million abortions have taken place in our country since Roe v. Wade leads, I would argue, to a very intense coarsening of our moral sensibility. 
that we have lost the sense of the uh, dignity, importance uh, of human life. And so figures like the 41%, I think, come just from that uh, collapse, you know, in the moral structure. Here's a third element, and um, it's something I think we prefer not to talk about. It's kind of a dirty little secret, and it brings me back in some ways to that uh, cab driver in Baltimore. Who can doubt, in light of this recent statistic, about 60% of the pregnancies of African-American women end in, in uh, abortion, who can doubt that abortion is disproportionately harming minorities and people on the margins in our society? The founder of Planned Parenthood uh, was Margaret Sanger, and um, look her up on YouTube, uh, read her writings. Margaret Sanger was an advocate of eugenics, which was very much in vogue at, at her time, namely a kind of purifying of the race. She felt that uh, a lot of undesirables were reproducing too much and that they should be restricted in their uh, reproduction. And by undesirable, she meant a number of categories, but one of them clearly was non-whites, and you get that from her writings. Now, you might think, well, that's just an old, strange idea. Well, I don't know. Consider this. Um, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg granted an interview to the New York Times Magazine. And in the course of the conversation, um, she turned to a consideration of the Hyde Amendment that blocks uh, federal funding for um, abortions. And here's what she said. This is a few years ago. Frankly, I had thought that at the time Roe was decided there was concern about population growth, and particularly growth in populations that we don't want to have too many of. Now, to me, that's a breathtaking remark to make. Not only that, this sort of frank acknowledgement that, yeah, controlling the population is part of it, but especially, you know, these people we don't really want too many of. One wonders, I would say, uh, who are these undesirables in the mind of Ruth Bader Ginsburg? Uh, we know who they are in the mind of Margaret Sanger, um, but you look at these startling statistics about who's being victimized by abortion, and you wonder whether Margaret Sanger's racist uh, fantasies are coming true. Now, here's my fondest hope, that these uh, very chilling, very disturbing numbers, and they should bother everybody. I don't care where you are on this question, left, center, or right. They should bother everybody. My hope is that they would trigger, at the very least, a profound national conversation around this most compelling moral issue of our time.